Now we're going to learn how to control the end scopes, function generator, and oscilloscope. Remember, the function generator creates signals, and the oscilloscope records them, almost like a camera taking pictures. What we're going to do is that we're going to hook the output of the function generator directly to the input of the oscilloscope so that we can use the oscilloscope to measure the signals that are coming from the function generator. Now remember, these four pins up here are the outputs from the function generator, and these four pins down here are the inputs to the oscilloscope. The function generator has two different kinds of outputs. Um, one is labeled A, and the other is labeled P. A stands for analog. These are analog outputs. Those can create sine waves and triangle waves. Those are analog type of waves. P stands for PWM. That's another way of saying a digital wave. So these P1 and P2 are ports that we can use to create PWM or square wave signals. We're going to start by connecting channel A1 of the function generator to channel 1 of the oscilloscope. I've just used a simple wire to make a connection from analog channel 1 of the function generator over to channel 1 of the oscilloscope. Now that we've made that connection, we can use the software to control the end scope and actually generate some signals and record them. This is the software interface for the N-scope. Over here on the right hand side are the controls for the oscilloscope. Right now channel 1 is on but the other channels are off. Over on the left hand side in the bottom here are the controls for the function generator. Right now, all of the function generator controls are off. Remember, we connected channel A1 on our board over to channel 1 on the oscilloscope. So we're going to turn on channel A1 of the function generator, and channel 1 on the oscilloscope is already on. When we do this, we can see that we start to see a signal on our screen, because now channel 1 of the function generator is creating this signal and channel 1 of the oscilloscope is measuring it. We can use these controls on the function generator to change the signal. Remember the function generator is the thing that creates the signal. So if we want to change it we have to use the function generator controls. So for instance down here there is an amplitude slider. Right now it's at 1 volt. If we want the signal to be larger we can slide this up. So I can slide that up to maybe 2.5 volts. And when I do this you can see that the signal gets bigger on the screen. I can slide it up even farther all the way to 4.75 volts and you can see that now I've gotten a larger signal. Right now, the signal is set to be unipolar, meaning that it goes from 0 up to 4.75 volts. But if I want, I can change that to bipolar. Now that I've made it bipolar, um, it goes from minus 4.75 volts to positive 4.75 volts. So bipolar means plus and minus, Unipolar means only positive. I can also change whether I'm creating a sine wave or a triangle wave. So I can switch this over to a triangle wave and you can see now I am creating a triangle wave. The other thing I can control about the signal is its frequency. So I can use this frequency slider here to control the frequency. I can slide this up to make a faster wave. 
So now you can see that the wave is changing more quickly, or I can slide this down to make a lower frequency wave. So those are the controls for the function generator. I can control the amplitude, the frequency, and the type of wave, sine or triangle, and also whether it's unipolar or bipolar. So those are all controls that change the signal itself. Remember, that's what the function generator does. It creates the signal. So I can use these controls to change the signal itself, change its size, its frequency, and its shape. Now let's look at the oscilloscope controls for a minute. Remember, the oscilloscope is like a camera that takes pictures of the wave. So just like a camera that's taking a picture of a scene, the oscilloscope captures what's there. It doesn't change what's actually happening. It only changes the way that you look at it. Okay? So there are several things that I can change about the way that I'm looking at this signal. I can control the sensitivity of this device. That's how many volts there are per division. So right now, this device is showing that there are two volts per division. Each division is one of these rectangles on the screen. So right now it's saying that each rectangle is two volts high. Okay. So that means that there, we can count the rectangles from the top to the bottom of our signal to figure out how much voltage is actually in our signal. So there's one, two, three, four, and a little bit, um, a little bit more than four boxes from the top to the bottom of our signal. Each box is two volts. That means it's a bit more than eight volts from the top to the bottom of our signal. Okay. If I want to change that, I can go over here to my slider and I can move that up to one volt per division. It's a little bit touchy. There you go. All right, so now there's one volt per division. And now you can see that the signal looks bigger on the screen. But again, I haven't actually changed the signal. I'm just zooming in on it, okay? So I'm looking at it more closely. So it looks larger, but the signal really hasn't changed in itself. Okay. And to check that, we can count the boxes again. Now we see that there's only one volt per division. So we can count the boxes from the top to the bottom of our signal. We can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a little bit more. So there's a little bit more than eight boxes now from the top to the bottom of our signal. And each box is one volt high. So that means a little bit more than eight volts from the top to the bottom of our signal, just like before. So the signal stayed the same size. We're just looking at it more closely now. The other thing that I can change about the function gen or about the oscilloscope is the time per division. So right now there are two seconds per division. That means that each one of these rectangles is two seconds wide. So if I want to measure the period of this signal, I could count how many boxes there were from one spot on the signal to the same spot on the next signal. So I see there's one, maybe one and three quarters. So that's about one and a half, or one and three quarters times two is about three and a half um, seconds from one spot on the signal to the next. So that is the period of our signal. Okay. This can be very useful if you have a, if you want to look at um, a much faster signal. Okay. So I can go over here to my function generator and create a much faster signal maybe at a slightly smaller 
amplitude. And if I'm looking at this signal like this, I can't really tell what's going on because it's so bunched together. So I need to use my oscilloscope controls to look at this a little bit more closely. So I can adjust the time per division and make that smaller. Now I'm seeing it a little bit more closely and I can zoom in a little bit more and now I'm seeing the signal much more clearly. Now, when I'm looking at the signal here, we can see it kind of going back and forth on the screen, and it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on. It would be hard to measure from one spot on the signal to the next because the signal keeps moving around, right? So in order to capture this signal and, and see it more clearly, we want to use something called triggering. So I'm going to come down here to the trigger control, and I'll turn that on. And now you can see that the signal is stationary on the screen, more or less. You can also see that over here on the right hand side there is a trigger level arrow and over on the left there's this vertical line. What's going on is that this the oscilloscope is now taking a picture of the signal every time it crosses this trigger level line. Okay? And it puts that the part of the signal that crossed that line right on this vertical line here. So I can move my trigger level up a little bit. And now you can see that the part of the signal that crosses the trigger level is still right on that vertical line. Or I can move the trigger level down a bit and the part of the signal that crosses that trigger level is still right on that line. And you can also see that I have chosen to have the rising edge there. So you can see that as the signal is rising and it crosses this trigger level line, that's the part that goes right on this vertical line. So I can turn the triggering on to capture that signal and keep it stationary. We can also use the end scope to create PWM signals. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this red wire from the analog output over to P1, the PWM output number one. And now I'm going to use the oscilloscope controls and the function generator controls to create a PWM signal. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn the analog signal off and I'm going to turn the PWM signal on. I'm going to move my trigger level up here. And now we have a PWM signal. I'm going to lower my sensitivity here so that we can see the whole signal. Now you can see we've got a digital signal that is going on and off and on and off. There are certain controls that we can use with the digital signal just like we did with the analog signal. So we can control the frequency here. If I lower the frequency, the signal moves more slowly. I can also control the duty cycle. This is the percent of time that the signal stays high. So right now it's at 50%. That means that the signal is high for half the time and low for half the time. If I change this duty cycle up to, say, 77%, that means it's high for 77% of the time and low for only 23% of the time. So we can vary the duty signal. Notice we cannot vary the amplitude. This is a digital signal, so it's either all the way on or all the way off. We cannot control the amplitude of that one. So those are the basic controls on the N-scope board. Remember, we can use the analog controls to create analog signals, including sine waves and triangle waves. 
we can use the PWM controls to create digital signals, which are square waves, and we can use the oscilloscope controls to measure those signals and display them on the screen.